My name is Meredith. I, I just turned 22 like a week ago. My birthday was in September. My first ever relationship would have been in preschool. Preschool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it would have been a kid named Mitchell. I remember he used to give me flowers on the playground. We'd have these little yellow kind of buttercups that would grow up and out of the grass. Some of this is memory from what my mom has told me. Oh. She'd like come come find us like on the playground, like behind the slide, like, and she'd be like, oh, guys. Then there was Ethan in elementary school, and then Emily in middle school, and then there was two Lorenas. Well, at first, like, you know, I had kind of the experience of like pretty early on of being like, I don't like this guy, like what's kind of going on here? And having that thought and being conscious of it and then like going into middle school and then like seeing a guy that was kind of cute and I'm like, okay, do I just think he's cute or do I like like him? And I'm like, I don't really like him. I just think his face is nice. And then I remember having kind of like a last ditch effort to try and get like a like a full on crush on a guy because it was like my first time in middle school. I'm like 12 years old trying to figure things out. And I remember this one guy, Matt, that would stand at the bus stop and he was in chess club and he had like a cast and like brown curly hair. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try and have like a meaningful connection with this dude, this random dude at the bus stop. Yes, I'm like, it, is it physically possible for me to like a man? And it just did not work out. And I'm like, I must be gay. I'm like, I am super in love with this girl, Emily and Clat. She wears like basketball shorts. She's got these big, beautiful, like amber brown eyes and really long eyelashes. And I'm like, I have the feeling of wanting to kiss her. I do not feel that with Matt. And I haven't really felt that with any guys. I was like, remember thinking that was very strange. And I'm like, what if it's just not possible for me? And then I met, uh, well, then I didn't meet Matilda. I met Lorena at like a Comic-Con and we dated for a few months until it eventually kind of fell out because she hadn't come out to her parents quite yet. So that to me wasn't really a sustainable relationship because the whole thing kind of felt like, you know, I can't really fully be myself when I'm around her and it's this kind of weird thing where I feel like I'm kind of being hidden away and tucked in the closet where she's still at. Well, uh, it was, I remember think, my mom has always been very kind of like accepting. I'm like, I know she's not gonna kick me out of the house or anything for something like this, but I'm like, okay, how am I gonna tell her? I'm gonna wait till she can't escape and run away. And so I told her in the car while we were at a stoplight. <laughs> it's like, mom, I think I'm gay. <laughs> and she's like, what? Where, where? It's like, we were talking about like the grocery list or something beforehand. I was 13 or 14. So it was like when I was dating Matilda, but I didn't want to tell my mom I was dating Matilda because it was the same thing, like Matilda hadn't quite come out yet. So she, we weren't in a spoken relationship, but it was a relationship, you know? We, we were not doing friend things. She was like, that's okay, honey. <laughs> That's fine, you know, we have gay friends, you know, Vicky and, <laughs> you know, stuff. So she was like, that's fine. Are you sure it's not a phase? You know, it's okay if it's not, but you know, this is just a little surprising. You've had boyfriends before. Like, I remember Mitchell from preschool. <laughs> Yeah, and she, I'm like, no, oh. and she had the thought of like remembering when I had dated Ethan, this little redhead boy on the playground, and she remembers kind of like asking about Ethan, and she remembers my reactions from like when I would come home and I would kind of have like, ah, Ethan's okay. <laughs> you know, not, not quite super interested, so she was like, okay, this makes sense. So, and that was like that all the way up until I was 17. <laughs> So, and then, you know, we had the whole thing where Matilda was kind of like getting ready to move on to college a little bit. And How then, 
I met Matilda through my mom, actually. <laughs> so my, it, it's a really, so my dad passed away when I was very young and my dad had a lot of exes. And one thing my dad always used to say to my mom was you should meet Anya. And Anya is Matilda's mother. So my mom always thought that was a little weird. Like, I don't know if I really want to hang out with your ex-girlfriend. That might be weird. But after he passed away, she and Anya started talking over Facebook and they became instant best friends. And she was like, oh my God, he was right. We totally were the same person. Like, this is the best. And then she was like, oh, Anya has a daughter your age, Meredith. This is wonderful. You guys can be best friends. And then we turned into a little bit more than best friends and didn't tell anyone. So, and then all that happened. And then the soap opera drama ensued where Matilda met like that one guy at a party. And you know, like little signs were sprinkled in here and there, like little red flags. Like she would kind of talk about the guy she met at a party. He's from Spain, you know. And then kind of like prom, my junior year came around and she, I had bought tickets for the two of us to go together to my, my junior prom. And I had everything ready. I had a dress picked out, you know. I had dinner plans before. And like the week before, she had told me like, oh, I can't go. I'm like, what? She's like, I have a friend who's moving away soon, you know, and he really wants me to go with him and I don't know when I'm gonna see him again. So I'm like, uh, okay, that's a little, you know, we kind of had this thing planned out, you know, it's like, it's prom, it's kind of a big high yeah. school event, you know, this is making me feel a little weird. And then I had found out that they were together, like together, together, not through her telling me, but through a Facebook post that her mom had posted. I talked to her like, two years after we had broken up and it was probably the most like heartbreaking thing I had ever gone through when it was like fresh. Because you know, that's my first ever like love. She was my best friend and like, we had talked about what wedding dresses we were gonna wear when we got married. Where like, I'm gonna have the kids because she has like, uh, she, she was mostly sick because she had problems with her lower intestine. So she had a colonoscopy bag so she couldn't get pregnant. So I was like, I'm going to have kids whenever we're ready for that. And we had made all these life plans together. But apparently what had kind of happened in her mind is when I talked about that stuff, I wasn't fully being serious because when she had had prior relationships with other guys that she had really liked, they would say the same things to her but then not be serious. It was kind of like a, like a fantasy daydream kind of thing. Like they're not actually going to do this stuff when I've never had any experience with this before. When I say it, I truly mean like, I'm gonna marry you. How we broke up is she told me she was moving to Spain with him. And it was really hard because we had the kind of relationship where I couldn't fully talk to her about how I felt because I was so scared of losing her. Like with Lorena, she was a girl I had kind of met and like, I never really had like a huge connection with her. Like we never talked about wedding dresses or kids or anything like that, you know? She was, she was fun and nice and lovely and pretty, but we never really had kind of that deep, like soul bonded, like you're my soulmate connection like I did with Matilda. So like, it felt so invalidating when I found out that she had just kind of gone and thrown away like four years of our lives for a guy that she had met at a party in my eyes. But you know, getting, after kind of like taking some time away from that, I, oh my God, I still can't go to the sushi restaurant we went to when we had this talk. We like didn't even break up at her house. It was at the, the sushi style restaurant right next to the Target. So after that happened, that was like the most soul crushing thing ever. And I didn't eat for about two days and I like could not get out of my bed. And like 
that's when my mom kind of found out what had been happening. I had to miss a few days of high school because of that. Everyone asked where I was. They're like, Mary, are you okay? I'm like, oh, not really, but I'll be okay eventually. <laughs> so that was like, I think that breakup was more painful than when my dad had passed away. This was a, this was a decision that was made. And after we talked about it, like, I don't know, it just wasn't the best base for a healthy relationship. And it really helped me kind of understand what went wrong in the whole thing, which I feel like I wouldn't be the person I am today without her. So I am thankful for the experiences she's given me. But at the same time, it really hurt. But it has helped me so much in my current relationship because, you know, when when I first met Kyle, we really bonded over that like experience of betrayal and absolute heartbreak. He'd had, the same thing. He'd had the same thing done to him, and it's like not only like did she run off with a stranger, but she ran off with his best friend. So he totally understood what I had gone through. Like you know, even though it had a less amount of time, but he had had that same thing of like having this kind of like really strong connection with someone and then just being thrown away what it is what it felt like yeah. so we're like oh my god you know how that feels so you won't do that to me that feels so safe and comfortable so when I met Kyle I made the conscious decision like I'm gonna treat him how I wish Matilda had treated me and here we are like almost four years later Felt attracted to him, so I was, yeah, I was so surprised. But you know what happened was, I didn't figure out is, I'm I'm not bisexual. I'm bi romantic and I'm demisexual, which is on I don't know what you know what the ace spectrum is. Oh yeah, well explain it. So demisexual is when you only. You can only experience a physical attraction if you've developed an emotional attraction to the person first, which I thought was so odd, and I didn't really learn about that until like a few years after dating Kyle, which after I learned about it, I was like, oh my God, that was kind of the missing puzzle piece. Like, that's why I thought I was gay for so long is because I had no guy friends. So I had never established like a deep emotional connection with a, a guy before. So of yeah, so of course I wasn't like really super invested in any of these guys I was going after. It's like I thought they were pretty, but you know, there's not really anything past that. <laughs> you know, you can think a woman is pretty and be like, eh, I mean, I don't want to take her on a date. <laughs> I still have family that's sort of like that, that I've kind of come out to and like, you know, when I was younger, that was a huge period of my life, like a long period of time that I thought I was gay from like 12 to 17. Like at that point, that's like most of your teen, that's, that's all your teens essentially. And it's not only that I've like found someone that I was able to click with, it's I've found someone I'm able to properly communicate with was the huge thing for me because that's never something I had with Matilda. Yeah. It's like open communication and trust. I didn't realize how enormous of a factor that was in like maintaining a healthy relationship, yeah. which in hindsight, it's so obvious that that's like the, the true basis of everything of any, like even friendships. But you know, you're 13, you don't realize that, and then you just build and build and build upon that all throughout your teens. You don't even realize, like, everything that was truly wrong with that until you're out of it. It's like, it's not something really a, a parent can teach you. You just kind of got to, you got to burn your hand on the stove yourself before you learn fire's hot. <laughs> Things just happen for a reason, though. Like, no, knowing what I know now, I... Had we gotten married, I don't know if it would have worked out. So it's a good thing timing worked out and things happened when they did because by the time like 
I had gotten into Dungeons and Dragons and I was ready to meet Kyle, you know, I was like, all right, I'm a year out of this whole mess, you know, I'm going in and I'm meeting a bunch of new people. I'm gonna have an open mind and I'm gonna just walk in the front door and see if anyone's cute. <laughs> so I like, you know, Adam had been coming in with all the stories about Dungeons and Dragons. I offered to draw everyone's characters and like, he's like, all right, bring her in next week. And I go to his house and I'm like, it's, I'm having the conscious thought, like, I'm going to try and meet someone today. Yeah. You know, this is new people that I've never met before. I'm going to see, like, these people probably have a lot in common with me. I might connect with someone here. And if I do, I'm ready for that, you know? So I walk in there and I'm like looking around, I'm like listening to everyone's voices and I keep kind of like going back to Kyle. I'm like, you know, he's got a really cute nose. I, I really like how he kind of rolls up his sleeves. He's got a, a button up on like, and he's got some, some dad sandals on. He's got his rainbows. <laughs> He's, he's got these, this really thick black hair that kind of sticks straight up like a hedgehog. And I'm like, I kind of really like that. <laughs> Me, like, kind of having that romantic connection with Kyle was a big surprise to me for the most part. But for some, like, I kind of felt ready for it and kind of okay with it. Yeah, well, I'm getting a little bit closer. I kind of dipped my toes in the water, like, not too long ago, but I got kind of, I got kind of cold feet because I did this one piece of like fan art for this one girl that I watch on YouTube and she plays this video game called Animal Crossing and you're like this little villager running around in a town full of like animals and they have all different personalities and you can give them like clothes and stuff as gifts and they'll wear like the cute little outfit and stuff. Like you go around, you fish, you catch bugs, you like uh, sit and like walk on the beach. And it's like really peaceful. And somehow she's managed to turn this like really peaceful kind of slice of life video game into this huge like kind of gossip tea time story. She's always kind of talking up like, oh my God, Marina the octopus is starting to hang out with Goose the chicken. And what if they're dating? Like, oh my God, Goose is such a playboy. And it's like this little guy who likes sports and stuff just running around in the game. And it's like, it's not that deep, but she has such like a prominent personality that it she just cracks me up to watch her videos. So I put out like a little piece of fan art of her and like one of her villagers and she put it up in her next video and I was like <gasps> and it had my full name on there and I'm like uh oh this is great. I know it was so exciting <laughs> but it was also terrifying because I've never had that sort of interaction with anyone on the internet before let alone someone I've never met in person because up until this point I've only ever made like art for my friends or family or for myself just like as fun presents or, you know, I'll draw whatever is going on in Dungeons and Dragons that week. Uh, but yeah, that was fun, but it was also terrifying. And I ended up taking it down and deleting my entire Twitter account after that. Wow. Even though I only had one thing on it, I was like, it's not that I think anything's gonna happen. It's just, I have this experience of when I was younger like 13 years old and you all remember like how your art is when you're 13 you know you've got like the little itty bitty sketch in the corner of your sketchbook and you're like thinking like oh this is perfect my masterpiece the height of whatever I've done and then like I remember feeling like oh my god I'm ready to post this this is so good compared to everything else I've done and I like had a whole DeviantArt account that I put up with like tons of drawings. What happened was the embarrassing part, not that my stuff got put up anywhere, but I lost the password to my account. And I remember going back and looking at it like five years later. And I remember just having like the absolute feeling of just cringing at my old stuff that I used to do. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe this is still up for people to see. Like this is, this is just the worst. I can't take it down anymore, you know? But at the same time, I don't know, it's a little bit fun because, you know, I don't have all those pieces anymore.
so like my worst fear is like putting something up that I'm not fully confident in, that I'm not like, this is my best work I have at this time. And either having like a future employer <laughs> look at it or like having a friend find the account and being like, oh my God, you did this four years ago. Like, look at this, you know? Or like, I guess it's more my own internalized monologue about it of just being like, this isn't the best I could have done. Your, your story you told earlier about your wife really resonated with me about like how, how to find her in the gallery. It's like you look for wherever her painting is and then you go to the opposite end as far as you possibly can and that's where she is. 